Hello and welcome to Form First Podcast. My name is Laura. And my name is Peter. We are the founders of Form First Fitness app. In this podcast, we'll be covering topics ranging from health, fitness, injury prevention, and how technology can help us as athletes to get better while staying healthy. We will be boiling down complex sports science topics, bringing you the latest research from the field of fitness and technology, and basically helping you be a more educated athlete by bringing best practices and sustainability to your training. Join us today for another episode of Form First Podcast, where we will be talking about injuries and injury prevention. Awesome. Well, let's go. I'm sitting here with my colleague Laura and today we'll be discussing injuries. Yep. I wanted to talk about injuries today as they are definitely the most common reason for people stop practicing sport. And um, research shows uh, that about 3.5 million children and teens below the age of 14 kind of get injured annually and this is solely in the US and when we do want to add Adults to this number, uh, again, in the US only, in 2016, this number kind of piled up to 8.6 million people. And this is pretty, pretty crazy. And also some research from the British Journal of Sports and Medicine shows that Europe follows very, very closely to those numbers. So this is pretty scary. Yes, of course, somebody could argue that there are a lot more people doing different types of sports, but still, Injuries are definitely one of the top reasons for um, for people stop practicing sports. And also, an interesting paper by Lena et al. published in the European Journal of Sports and Science found that sports injuries are the main cause for sports career termination amongst elite athletes. So. Yeah, I can imagine it must be pretty devastating if you're an athlete and yes, you get exactly. it's injured. Your, yeah, exactly. It's your job and it's uh, it's your life in a way. Um, I like a really nice comment that uh, when you have a regular job, you're kind of a um, eight to five uh, kind of responsibility. But when you're an athlete, your job is twenty four seven. Yeah, in, it doesn't stop. Yeah, exactly. So it's 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 pretty devastating, and injuries are definitely a big. Um, uh, a big issue in this. Yes. So today we'll be covering the different types of injuries. Yeah. What's the reason behind them? And most importantly, how can we prevent this? Yeah. So let's go. And also, just a disclaimer before uh, we get any further. Uh, uh, you should probably consult any more specific information with your doctor and if, yes. if you're willing to make changes in your lifestyle or training. Yes, we have been uh, doing very, very thorough research, but yes, definitely we're not doctors and this is just general information for you guys and we really hope that's useful. But yes, indeed, consult your doctor if you're planning to do any uh, major changes in your lifestyle and in, in your training in that matter. So talking about main types of injuries, and I think it's worth kind of laying down what the different types of uh, injuries are before we move on. And just to be clear, as we're talking today about injuries, we do refer to sports injuries. And there are a lot of other types of injuries, but we are a fitness podcast. So we're going to be talking about injuries in the context of uh, sport and training. So there are generally four types of injuries um, and we can divide them as soft tissue injuries, hard tissue injuries, head and neck injuries and overuse injuries. So soft tissue injuries are the injuries that are anything from a small cut that would not mostly scar to like a bruise and going to the point of like bigger um, contusions such as deeper tissue damage, bigger cuts, and the so-called burst type open wounds. And these usually happen when there's some kind of an impact to an object or a person. Think about you getting bruised and just hitting yourself in something or someone. And we have heart tissue injuries, and these are injuries that occur, uh, that affect your teeth and bones. So any fracture on your, let's say, uh, jawline, 
or any fracture or any bone will go into the heart tissue injury. Then we have the head and neck injuries and these are anything to do uh, from sprains and strains and fractures to uh, that are traumatic to the brain or the spine cord and this could be anything like a, like a whiplash of your neck um, or, uh, or a concussion. So these are also um, kind of anything that could occur uh, that would damage your brain uh, or your spinal cord. And all those three categories, not exclusively, but very often they fall under um, the so-called acute injury category. And acute injuries are a sudden injury that usually is associated with traumatic event, such as clashing into another player during sports, or perhaps fall from a bike, and as we said, or maybe kind of clashing into an object. And this is a traumatic impact that can cause your bones to crack, your muscles to tear, or ligaments and soft tissue damage. And the last type of injury is overuse injury. And this is defined as injuries that result from a mechanism or repetitive and cumulative microtrauma without any specific onset incident. And I do want to talk a little bit more about overuse injuries because I really think that these are way trickier to deal with. They are more difficult to spot and often Sadly, in practice, by the time we spot them and we kind of admit to ourselves that we do have um, an overuse injury, we probably a little bit too late and we already probably need some kind of a treatment. But it's also, also, also bad, you know, there are a lot of things we can do about it. So overuse injuries can usually be classified into four types or four stages also. And this is pain in the affected area during activity. So this is pain that does not affect performance. So I would say this is a huge problem for professionals or, um, or I would say enthusiasts, because as we learn to train, we kind of, we are taught to kind of grind and, and go through pain and, and kind of associate a certain level of discomfort as a normal part of, of our training. And it is just, Sometimes when we're committed to our training, it's just so difficult to, to kind of admit to yourself that you're experiencing pain and your body is not just kind of complaining, so to say, but it's an actual pain that your body is telling you, okay, I'm experiencing some damage and maybe you should kind of stop or look into it. So this is, I would say this particular stage is super tricky for, uh, I would even say even for beginners, because it's just, again, so difficult to, for beginners to, um, to associate what is muscle soreness and what is like this discomfort that we experience during training when we're pushing ourselves really hard and what is a pain that our body basically says, okay, something's going wrong, wrong, maybe you should. Yeah, I think especially, yeah, as you said, when you are a beginner, it might be difficult because your body is basically, it is a cry for help in a, in a way of your body saying, okay, I need some assistance, you exactly. know, take and some rest. And yeah, differentiating those two different states of what's good, exactly. what's, what's the level of pain or what's the level of stress that your body can take to actually just move get forward better, and yeah. get better and stronger and what's uh, the kind of stress that actually needs some medical attention. Exactly. Maybe. It is. And it is so difficult to nail, uh, as we said, on one side, you have your beginners who probably can't differentiate between the two different pains. And then you have maybe on the other side of the scale, your enthusiasts or your professionals that are just so used to this discomfort and kind of grinding through 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 it that they just don't stop when they should but yeah so the second stage is pain that affects performance so this is pain in the affected area during activity which in this case does restrict performance so this is your type of pain that you try to perform an activity and then your body goes like mm, no it hurts too much and you just can't can't do it the other stage is pain in the affected area after activity and this is again i would say problem for beginners because again it is very difficult when you don't have enough experience to distinguish what is your normal expected muscle soreness after training and what is a pain that maybe 
kind of signals for uh, overuse injury. Um, so I would say this is also a very tricky one. And the, the last stage is your chronic pain of the affected area. And chronic pain means um, that we experience pain even after rest. And by after rest, I mean not only after the activity uh, immediately, but maybe even a couple of days have passed. You have rested the, uh, the muscle or the, the, the area that hurts and, and the pain just doesn't go away. So this is, goes within your chronic, um, chronic pains and chronic injuries. Okay, so that was the breakdown of the different types of injuries. Now, what are the different reasons that people get injured? Oh, that's a... Um, well, again, we're going to talk a little bit more in general. And of course, that's going to vary uh, significantly between, between sports. But again, the most common reasons for injuries um, as, as categories are again overuse, as we mentioned. Improper warm-up is huge. I know it's very, very simple, but it is staggering how many people get injured because of improper warm-up and activation of their muscles. Poor technique. Then you know we are very, very, yeah. we're very particular, and we feel very strongly about technique and um, and and kind of proper form when performing um, an exercise, and of course impact. Well, while I don't want to talk a little bit about impact today, because in my opinion, yes, maybe some can argue there's so much that can be done to to prevent injuries from impact, but I do think that. Mm, impact often goes within the realm of incidents and uh, or accidents and and I just I just think that we can talk a little bit more about the things that we can actively work on which is our technique our warm-up and kind of trying to spot those overuse um, injuries when they are starting to occur and what kind of things we can do to to prevent them of course so um, Again, going back to um, overuse injuries, as I said, in my opinion, they're so tricky to deal with. And an overuse injury is a type of muscle or joint injury. And um, a, an, an example of it is tendonitis or a stress fracture. And these are caused by repetitive trauma, which means that you're creating micro trauma that you may not feel at the moment when it's happening. But if that micro trauma continues happening, uh, then eventually that would lead to a serious, more serious issue with your uh, muscles or joints. And um, overuse injuries typically uh, come from training errors and training errors can occur when you take too much physical activity too quickly. And that would mean either going too fast or exercising too long or just simply doing too much of one type of activity can strain your muscles and can lead to an overuse injury. And the other, another type is technique errors. And yeah, uh, it is just mind blowing how many people are so eager to go into the more complex moves and to do more advanced stuff. And then they just don't pay enough attention to their technique. And a poor technique can definitely take a toll on your body. And um, if you use poor, poor form as you do a set of strength training exercises primarily, uh, or let's say a swing of a golf club or throw a baseball, uh, for example, you may overload certain muscles and cause an overuse injury. So um, yeah, kind of going a little bit too hard too fast when you're a beginner and also not taking time of um, your um, of like to, to, to learn the proper technique when you prefer when you're performing complex uh, exercise is definitely uh, the two main streams and kind of main reasons for overuse injuries to occur yes and we'll definitely spend a lot more time in the upcoming podcast also this coming discussing form or or technique but uh, okay let's suppose that an injury happens yeah how long actually is there some research uh, showing how long it takes for a uh, for an athlete to recover or yeah uh, medical news daily uh, reported that 67 percent of interruptions to training for british olympic athletes have been uh, because of an injury and 43 percent of those athletes 
get injured at least once per season. Um, and some will, um, some will have more than one injury. Um, and what is actually interesting is that not that much the number of injuries, I guess, our listeners would think, hey ho, but they're professionals, this is what they do, of course they're gonna have a mishaps and, and whatever. But the, what is applicable to us that in this research, in this research it showed that um, each injury resulted at a loss of about 17 days of training on average and one missed competition. So imagine that if you if you are a beginner and you go a little bit too hard and a little bit too crazy with your training because you're so enthusiastic and then it hits you and then you take like two or three weeks off training and then maybe it happens again and so on and so forth. And these interruptions not only take a toll on our bodies, but also then coming back to training, coming, you know, kind of getting again the motivation to come back and, and so on. That could be very detrimental even for a, for an amateur athlete. So just, just, we have to do everything possible to just not get injured and be just mindful about our practice. So. Yeah. And as far as I know, that 17 day figure, that's an average. So and again, of course, some people will lie on, you know, some injuries will will recover short in a shorter period of time exactly. and some will take even longer so exactly and and it's and it's just so much uh it, it, it's so different and i guess um people recover differently as we grow older it definitely our bodies uh, recover a little bit slower um yes different types of injuries will take will take different time to recover and again we have to take in consideration that these are professional athletes so I mean, it's probably sad, but most likely true that a lot of them will get back into training, even that they are not fully recovered. So saying 70 days of training doesn't necessarily mean that they are fully recovered before they go back to training. Maybe, no. maybe they have, and just throwing in a simple example, but let's say maybe they have a shoulder injury, but they keep training their lower, uh, lower body, or let's say I have, <laughs> I have quite literally seen athletes with a cast broken leg or something still being in the gym doing like press ups and and pull ups with a cast and and just working yeah it's it, it's i mean it's your job it's your it's your commitment to your um to your sport so it is it is very very tricky but um as i mentioned at the beginning uh injuries are the main the main reason why people stop exercising and we don't really necessarily say that they should stop being active and athletes probably do that but i guess it's much more um, typical for an amateur to 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 go uh, and say, "Oh, I'm injured, so I'm not going to do anything." And oh, yeah. Well, now now that got me thinking actually about the age, because like maybe most athletes, I assume, start at a young age, and they are pretty fearless and yeah, their yeah training definitely. technique. Definitely. And maybe if if you know you go like this for 10, 15, 20 years, uh, you know, when you hit forty, let's say, then your body's ability for recovery of course decreases yeah and definitely. if you keep pushing yourself thinking that you know it's going to be fine it's going to be fine well maybe, yeah, maybe you should stop and think maybe about it. yeah or or maybe you should just keep going and just break yourself no 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 you don't do that <laughs> All right. again maybe that's why we don't have do the, maybe that's we why definitely we're not don't advise to just keep going and get wrecked that's definitely not so So we were discussing the most common reasons for uh, getting injured. Now let's talk about how we can prevent them. Yes. The good news is that a lot of injuries, if not to say all injuries, could be prevented. So the way I would like to think about injury prevention is um, kind of in, in two, two, two ways. So one is the way what we do in our daily training, such as warm up and stretching and using correct equipment. And the other one is a little bit more, I would say, macro and more to do with our training strategy and programming in and the things that we do in order to build strength and practice good technique and just um, all other 
general practices that we can incorporate within our training to keep us uh, from injuring, getting injured in the long run. And um, the best way to prevent sports injury is to warm up properly and stretch. And it is so basic and yet so many of us are just so eager to jump into our practice and just get going. Yes. And um, yeah, having, I mean, having cold muscles um, are just asking for overstretching and tears within our uh, muscles and ligaments. And w while warm muscles are more flexible and they can absorb quicker movements, bends, jerks, and just, just making injury uh, less likely. And it is so important when we warm up and do muscle activation, um, to just consider what kind of a training we're going to be doing. So as both of us do CrossFit, um, I can probably refer to a uh, some strength training that we do. Let's say that if we are going to be doing stuff on a bar, like gymnastic stuff, we're going to make sure that we really work and warm up our shoulder joints. Um, while if we're doing any type of squats, then we're going to make sure that we have a proper glute activation and we kind of work getting into this deeper squat and feeling very comfortable and like warming up and just loosening up the hip joints uh, um, kind of activating as i said our glutes our hamstrings um, and getting those ankle uh, kind of also agile and um, and warmed up so it is important to warm up and have a good muscle and mental activation and warm up is not only I mean, so you can say that I can go on the treadmill for five, 10 minutes and that's a warm up. Yes, indeed. As you do um, cardiovascular activity, you do raise your pulse, you do raise your core body temperature, but it's also important to do mental activation or the so-called um, uh, mind muscle uh, connection to build that mind muscle connection. So again, coming back to, um, to our example from our training, that will be, of course, after doing all the activations and the stretching, then you do, if you're going to be doing some lifts, you want to take a PVC pipe or a broomstick, then just kind of practice the move. That's not because you, ha you haven't been, you know, warm enough. And it's not because it's like so challenging, but it's just so, so good to just kind of tell not only your body, but your central nervous system, okay, that is the move. This is the activity that I'm going to be doing. So let's kind of activate your uh, your brain um, into into kind of getting tuned into the activity that you're going to be doing and yeah warm muscles are generally less susceptible to to injuries and proper warm-up is just so 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 important as well it is nice um, and kind of gentle stretch after after heavy physical activity so this is just so simple, but if I can give a one simple advice, is just consider the type of activity that you're going to be performing and just try to um, just try to warm up and activate your muscles um, that are going to be engaged the most. And yeah, just try to get this mental activation, practice a little bit without any weight, practice, just, just think about it, visualize it. And now it sounds crazy, but visualizing yourself doing what you're going to be doing um, as training just helps so much to to get uh, psychologically um, um, and neurologically in tune with with the activity that you're going to be doing and of course our our favorite topic proper technique and yeah i can't i can't talk enough about this but um just we have to learn the proper way to move during a sport and activity and it is just so easy to go like ah, i can do it it's fine it's just so so crazy important and different types of exercises require different stances and postures and um the only recommendation i can do in this case is just find a coach find a professional Find somebody that can teach you the proper technique, master the proper technique, even if it's with minimal weight or no weight at all. And only then, only then move on to, 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 to higher intensity. And you can add intensity either by performing the exercise faster or by adding weight or both. So don't, don't rush cranking up the intensity before you have really mastered that technique and um, 
I just remember um, a little in interview from uh, an Olympic weightlifter who was saying how his coach um, got him to do um, for months. He was practicing his clean and jerk and his snatches with, and he's like the, one of the heavier, heavier categories uh, with something like 30, 40 kilos, which is like not even warm up weight for for professional weightlifters and he was feeling so down and kind of a little bit depressed that all his friends and other people in the club were were doing like all the heavyweights and stuff like this and he coach his coach was like no you're gonna master the perfect technique and only then we're gonna go heavy and he said that his coach got him to practice for something like almost a year um with very light weights and then in six months he got him from from a 40 kilo snatch to 120 kilo snatch because as soon as you have proper technique then you can you just work on strength and when you have the proper mechanics it is way easier to just go heavy while if you continue to do heavy training with poor technique at, to a certain degree your body could compensate in certain mechanics and in certain positions uh, but if you don't master the technique, it will never, you'll never be able to kind of uh, fulfill your full potential because your technique will be lacking. Yeah, I mean, this definitely impacts both uh, or has impact on both performance and possibility of injury. So exactly. if, if, you, if you don't have the, pro the proper or correct form, then of course you'll be activating and using different muscle groups than you should and you can overuse them. And yeah, definitely. Uh, and not only, um, I would say from a little bit more practical uh, perspective, let's say that you, you go like, you know what, I just want to get those those results. I just want to get those weights up. I just want to be like the, you know, the, the serious athlete. And then you keep learning the poor technique or the poor movement patterns. And it is so much more difficult to unlearn and then learn the right stuff than to just be a responsible athlete and say, you know what, I'm just gonna look at myself and I, I'm doing this for me, then I'm gonna go there, really master this technique and um, this, this form to perfection, and then I'm gonna get really strong and then show those results. If you are just responsible and smart enough, rather than just go to a certain level, let's say to intermediate level, and then kind of hit a plateau and you're never gonna get out of it, perhaps, um, or it's going to be way more difficult to get out of it. It's just because it's so difficult once when those neurological pathways have been developed for a prop, for a wrong form and for a poor technique, it is just so difficult to, as I said, unlearn and then learn right stuff and your job's going to get, I mean, at the end of the day, the, the person that was responsible at the beginning will get much faster, much further than the one that just kind of rushed their um their training and just wanted to get kind of heavier into within the higher intensity faster and um yeah i just wanted to kind of throw in i found a very very interesting paper from the british journal of sports and medicine on the topic of risk factors of sports injuries and poor posture and decreasing muscle control and poor technique are some of the top factors for muscle strains and and those like kind of um injuries that throw you off your training and and again we talked a little bit about posture um, and, and technique of performance but I want to also mention very briefly decreasing muscle control and decreasing muscle control is often not an issue within your muscles and within the kind of um, the metabolic process going within your muscles but again has a lot to do with this neurological relationship between between your muscles and your brain so very often decreasing muscle control happens because of your central nervous system can't take it or it gets confused or gets overwhelmed and so on. And again, reiterating to what we just said, the more we practice good technique, the better muscle control we're going to have throughout, um, throughout training and, um, and, and, and here I'm talking, just to give it kind of an in, 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 in example, but this is when you're not really tired, you're not really completely wrecked, but it's just, you're, you, you just can't. You feel wonky, your technique is all over the place, and it feels like your body doesn't listen to you, and, and you do some like weird stuff, and you go like, oh my God, what is going on with me? Like, why am I so 
distracted? Why am I not focused? Why I can't, in a way, why is my brain not controlling my my body as, as I wish it does? And this is where, as I said, this neuromuscular uh, um, kind of activation and control happens. And the more we practice and the more confident we are in our technique, the better muscle control we're going to have as muscle fatigue starts kicking in. So that's uh, also another great reason that we have to work on our um, on our technique and uh, the proper form when we um, perform exercises. Cool. Uh, and what about back pain? No, back because pain. for example, like even even me for, for myself, I have to say that sometimes my back feels really sore and to a point where I'm a little bit uh, hesitant when performing certain exercises. Yeah, I think back pain is, 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 um, is definitely a topic worth discussing and um, I'm not going to get too much into detail, but back pain is definitely one of the most common issues faced by athletes. And by athletes, I don't necessarily mean professionals, but let's, let's say people that kind of care about their fitness and um, and just want to work and, 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 and train um, to be dedicated in their training in a way. So, for example, in weightlifting, um, almost every elite athlete is affected by back pain. Runners have it a little bit easier, but we do know runners have other overuse injury issues such as, you know, problem Joints, with their, yeah. Yeah, with their hips and their knees uh, due to the repetitive impact that they have. Uh, from the repetitive motion of running. Um, even swimmers and skiers have issues with back pain. And even that they're a little bit lower than uh, weightlifters, it's still anything between 30 to 60%. Um, here we can throw in uh, also tennis players, soccer players, wrestlers, gymnasts. All of them reveal that they have issues about 50 to 85% of them experience somehow, somewhat issues uh, with their back and some, some, uh, some type of a back pain. And the solution for it, again, is, is, is pretty much everything that we talked about so far. Again, we're talking about stretching and activation pre, um, pre-training. Crazy important, strengthening your back and abdomen and uh, maintaining correct posture during exercise, um, not to overbend or overextend. Um, of course, um, here we can throw in stuff like um, just the general practices of just proper water intake, um, kind of ma- maintain your general aerobic and anaerobic capacity, um, you know, keeping your weight correct and so on. But these are a little bit more the general sports and well being factors. Uh, plenty of sleep and rest and sleep is just so crazy important for your again um, for your for your brain to recover and for this neuromuscular um, you know capacity that we build as we train and again just proper technique uh, is uh, probably the the most important Um, and just uh, as soon as your you have good technique and your body is focused and relaxed and and your and your mentally health and emotionally uh, focused, you can definitely um, avoid issues with your back. But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a big problem, and and we have to take it seriously. Basically, numbers are telling us that even if you don't experience back pain, probably you will at some point. So yeah, better better take. Um, take precautions and yeah just definitely spine has a difficult job keeping us straight yes straight and bearing a lot of weight but yeah so cool do you have some maybe some practical advice that we can add to our fitness regime yes i hope we didn't scare people off by now but if they're still listening dear listeners there is hope <laughs> yes injuries are scary and dangerous but the good news is that they are avoidable and yeah again we kind of brushed on some of the things but i just want to put them in in order here so number one build muscle strength and i'm talking about um strict strength 
So no matter of the sport that you're doing, you probably do want to do a little bit of conditioning exercises before you practice or before a game to strengthen the muscles. And also you probably want to incorporate some strength training in your uh, regime in general, just to kind of keep these things tight. Um, and so we, we want to keep everything kind of uh, strong and tight, but also we want to keep our joints and our spine flexible. So this could be done, um, again, as we mentioned, uh, stretching uh, before and after practice, but also deliberately working on our mobility and on our kind of imbalances and, you know, the any asymmetry that we have within our mobility in our body. Again, can't stress anymore, uh, proper technique. So whenever you're starting a new activity, as we said, or we haven't practiced for a long time, just consider taking lessons. Um, and just, just, just work, 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 work that technique until you, you're really, really confident and then only then start kind of cranking up the uh, intensity. Another thing is use proper gear. So proper gear, everything within your equipment that you use, uh, your shoes, your clothing, that comes into proper gear. Um, and just make sure you wear proper shoes for the activity. I remember when I started doing CrossFit, I was ha having these um, runner shoes, and I'm not saying that you have to have like super special shoes, but these were definitely not the best shoe possible. So I definitely felt that while very soft and cushiony, they didn't, you know, offer me enough support um, on my on my ankle and on my foot in general. So I actually had. Um, twisted my ankle a couple of times nothing really serious but it was definitely painful for a few days um, so I I was a little bit hesitant in investing for specific shoes for the sport but I it's probably the best thing I have done uh, to do with my with my experience so again you don't need to have crazy fancy equipment but be mindful and take care of um, of your gear and make sure that's uh, on point just to make sure that you uh, prevent any kind of um, funky injuries. Um, we, we spoke a little bit about it, pace yourself. Again, if you're starting a new fitness program or you have been uh, out of training for a long time, uh, avoid becoming a weekend warrior. And what I mean by this is don't try to compress your physical activity for the week into two days. It's better to do half an hour every day rather than try to do 12 hours in a weekend that is your body will not take it and again we're going back into doing far too much at one go so consider maybe carving in a little bit of time within your week even if it's for a short uh, activity but do it more frequently rather than just longer and heavier and uh, yeah if you're starting just gradually increase your activity level um, we mentioned it several times, but um, when changing the intensity or duration of your physical activity, just do it gradually. Um, if you want to increase the amount of weight you're using while strength training, increase it by no more than 10% each week. Um, and this is a little bit like when we want to lose weight, we just half our calorie intakes because we want fast results, but um, we shouldn't. Same as with dieting, just do it slowly and gradually. And again, don't rush it because it's going to come and bite you back. And, um, and the last one, which uh, in my opinion is my favorite, um, mix up your routine with uh, cross training. And um, everybody, you know, that, that is kind of serious about training, even professionals, let's say runners don't just run. Um, soccer players don't just play football. Um, weightlifters don't just lift weights you know um, kind of incorporating different type of activity within your um, within your training um, especially low impact activities such as walking biking swimming um, or as I said incorporating some strength training to help you build a stronger core a stronger back um, will definitely help you get get uh, further into your sport wherever that sport is um, yeah just uh, in a way be just think of 
all the kind of activation that you need during your sport and um and and try to to work those muscle groups in a just just in a different way that's probably the one of the best advices i can give to people cool that was that was very interesting so now maybe we can transition a little bit towards talking about our personal experiences with injuries and being injured and how that affected us so i don't know if you want to start? Oh man, you're making me vulnerable. <laughs> no, well, um, I have been practicing sport uh, um, since I was a child and I did stop for a few years, but um, um, we have been training for about a year and a half and I definitely um, experienced some, some issues. I did have some, as you remember, some shoulder injury um, and it was an overuse injury that I just decided to grind through and at some point it went to 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 a point that I just couldn't perform anything that um, was activating my shoulder joint. Um, I did get it fixed. Uh, um, I had a fantastic osteopath that helped me realize that it was a big part of it was a, uh, a matter of my my posture and um, um, and kind of I was pressing on some nerves um, and on some blood vessels that were um, stopping the, the the kind of my muscles weren't getting fed and the innervation of the of the um, uh, of the arm wasn't wasn't going there um, but um, it, it took me if you remember I, I I didn't train my upper body pretty much for a month and a half and then it took me probably a few months to and I'm I think I'm still getting back into my previous strength pre-injury so again talking about it i kept training i didn't train my upper body and it took me yes maybe i didn't lose many days in not training completely but i didn't train my upper body and my shoulder for weeks and and if you take the recovery time and then the time that it took me to get back to my previous level of strength i would probably round it up to probably three months if no more. And uh, as I was thinking about um, how I was talking about like building just uh, core strength and like strict strength, I just remember about this really, 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 really bad deadlift that I did um, some months back and I did PR and I was like so committed to it. And you know, when you're like so committed to the lift halfway through it and you go like, okay, that's really bad, but I'm, I'm already there. So I better finish. And and I did it and I was all cool. But then I was sore for days and I was sore not because of that one lift that I did. I was sore because I did it with such a poor form. And I was just thinking, I was like, oh my God, I'm so grateful for the fact that I do have a strong core and a strong back because with the, the crap lift that I did right now would have probably broken my back or slipped a disc or something if I wasn't fit enough. So I definitely worked a lot on my technique till then, but I think that was a very, very good example. And I'm not saying that you, you guys should think, oh, if I'm really strong and I'm very, very kind of, um, you know, I have very, very good core strength, I can get away with poor technique. No, you can't. But maybe that one time when you're just being really stupid, you can get away with it. But you should still fix your form because I was still sore and I'm pretty sure that if I have continued just doing it the same way, you know, I would have definitely injured myself. But I was thinking, I was like, oh my God, I'm so lucky. I really, I really, really dodged a bullet there. And um, um, yeah, I'm, it was just so bad. Um, but it definitely like just working strict strength and having like a very, very strong core definitely kind of... Um, got me got me through it without anything major yeah and i i have to say for myself as well that fortunately i have to knock uh but uh, fortunately I, I haven't had any any serious in injuries but i definitely most of my i would say risk would come from reduced or low mobility yeah and now that I'm thinking about it, also maybe not very strong core. Yeah. And I think that's maybe why I was experiencing some back pain. Uh, I remember it was a couple months back. Yeah. And it was basically whatever I did when I put weight on myself. Yeah. Like back squats. We were doing some squats. Yeah. And it just 
heard yeah. a lot. And but fortunately, uh, like over a couple of weeks, it, it vanished, so that's not a problem anymore. And yeah, mostly issues. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but I think is that again, as we probably. as we are as we are cranking up our training intensity, and you're getting better at moves, and you're getting a little bit more gutsy, and a little bit more confident in your own strength and ability. Uh, you know, you're kind of moving from a, from a beginner to an intermediate athlete, or maybe from intermediate to a little bit more advanced, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, and yeah, this is crazy important. I mean. Um, I know for probably some people that are very serious about their training, 100 kilo back squat is not really a big deal, but you have been training for for like about a, a little bit over a year and we have been doing CrossFit and like having really, really this like hard training and being very dedicated to our program for, for what, seven, eight months. So going from 30, 40, 50 to 100 is huge. And here now, when you go into the bigger weights, and um, I actually did a little bit of a search, but for males, 100 kilo is definitely within the intermediate to advanced uh, weight, almost almost regardless of your of your body weight. Um, so you're coming into into like kind of the serious weight, and yeah, if you if you don't um, keep an eye on your on your form or your mobility and and kind of your movement patterns, that could be definitely very dangerous. So um, yeah, that's 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 pretty much it, I guess. Um, I hope that was useful and um, brought some kind of ideas of uh, just general practice. I know that they're very common, and you know, but at the same time, they're very simple to follow and they're very easy. But again, all of us are guilty to a certain extent of not practicing them. Yes. Um, very well. So I hope that kind of reminds you guys to what you can do and what kind of things you should you should think about when you train, uh, and kind of help incorporate some of those good practices in your in your training. Yes, and uh, following this, we'll, you'll be able to find all the information and all the references that we yes. used on on our blog on our website, uh, along with this podcast. Yes, our website is formfirst.app. And you can find uh, um, this episode together with kind of any research and uh, yeah, and you can get in contact with us there as well. If you have any questions, comments and other, yeah, other stuff just in general. So I hope you enjoyed this and you're going to join us um, next week for our next episode. Yes. And see you until then.